Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for allowing me to do a presentation, actually, because there was a gap in the program. Uh, someone cancelled, and I and they've asked to uh, tell something about a project that they've been working on with archivists from other archives as well, called Share That Knowledge, Finding Strategies for Passing on Knowledge Across Generations of Archivists. Um, I'm Janneke van Dalen. I work as a film collection manager together with my colleague who's doing the camera, Kevin, Kevin Lutz, um, at the Austrian Film Museum. And um, I also put Nadia Sikjarov on the slide because these slides are recycled. I mean, we, we both um, manage the project uh, together so, um, and used this presentation before as well. So Shared at Knowledge is a, is a project that aimed at finding better methods for sharing knowledge within archives among colleagues and especially also across different generations of archivists, starting from the idea that knowledge about the collections that we work with, the knowledge that is with archivists, with technicians, with researchers, with communities, um, is a part, an intangible part of audiovisual heritage, but it's also fragile. It's, um, it needs attention for it to be passed on, shared, and preserved. So this is a very broad like, starting point also. And um, actually, this project started here in, in, um, uh, in Prague, in a way, because in 2018, Nadia and I presented, uh, we were talking among each other about our experiences at our workplace. I started a year um, before at the Austrian Film Museum, and she just started her job at the Slovenska Kinoteca. Um, and we were talking about our experience with more experienced colleagues. Uh, some colleagues were there already for a long time. We are working, for example, with a colleague who is there for 54 years already, and still comes in once a week. Um, so we, were, we wanted to, th these were our main questions in the beginning. Like, how can we share or how can we also mm, get a little bit of this knowledge of these extremely experienced colleagues? Um, and how can we bring in also new knowledge that we learned in our studies or perhaps we want to change also some things because we thought they, there might be better, newer standards for certain yeah, newer uh, other practices. So our first question was really about intergenerational uh, knowledge exchange. And we started here in Prague because there was a FIAF a symposium dedicated to sharing in 2018, um, um, asking these questions also to other colleagues, talking about them uh, with other colleagues. Um, and we noticed that a lot of colleagues have similar issues and the issue of knowledge sharing is actually much broader than just these, these questions. Um, um, so, um, basically, um, yeah, sorry, so go to the next. And, and also, um, so there are all kinds of different types of knowledge that are at risk and all kinds of different situations that make it also difficult or challenging to actually share this knowledge. For example, um, that at the moment, especially a whole generation of experienced archivists that works with archives for a long time is uh, retiring and also technological changes that are actually continuous in our field uh, which also means obsolescence of formats and um, techniques but also the knowledge attached, attached to these uh, techniques and formats um, but also new working cultures and um, like younger a younger generation of archivists might tend to switch like change jobs more rapidly and it might also be because they don't get permanent contracts i think this is a, a huge uh, topic in our field um, so um, we like in talking with colleagues we also noticed that there are a lot of different methods already practiced in different organizations but that these were not necessarily not always conscious like they're also Knowledge sharing happens all the time, of course. They're not always systematic. And also, there was not a lot of sharing between archives about how to preserve or share different, different uh, types of knowledge. Um, so um, that's why we started a project 
a research project that became a bit more elaborate than perhaps originally um, thought because it's such a yeah huge uh, huge topic. Um, we got um, in 2019 funding from the uh, Ministry of uh, Art, Culture and um, Public Service and Sport in uh, Austria, um, which allowed Nadia and me to work on it for um, for each of us half a year, spread over a few years. Um, and we had this whole working group of um, archive affiliates, among who also the NFA um, and BFI, and some of you are also here uh, in the uh, that, that worked in at the project. And all of these, um, I will later talk about the research specifically, what we did, um, and everybody actually did in in, in the the measure that they could, uh, um, and because everybody it was not like sponsored for them to work on it. Um, so the time that they could spend, they, they would contribute to the project. And because we wanted to do a qualitative research um, based on Karen Gracie's idea of archival ethnography, um, she um, was part of the project as a research advisor. Um, and the idea, so our, our main, first we did a survey uh, among perhaps some of you have also participated in the survey. It was already in 2019. Um, and then we started this qualitative research. Um, interviews with, with colleagues within each of these institutions, but also interviews with colleagues who responded to the survey with already concrete methods in mind. And these interviews were, were aimed at finding out what types of knowledge are at risk, what are the challenges of sharing this type of knowledge, what are the moments also in which um, knowledge sharing becomes very crucial? Um, and what are the methods that are already practiced or what are ideas for methods that could be practiced? And these interviews were open, um, um, uh, yeah, open-ended questions. So we didn't plan them with a, with a fixed uh, questionnaire. Um, they were about, like we, we interviewed people about how they started in, the, in their profession, how they learned, how they are sharing their knowledge with their colleagues. Uh, and this way we try to find out the dynamics also of knowledge sharing within, within audiovisual archive. And just a little bit about why we thought it was important to also do this qualitative research and start a little bit from the scratch, like really looking in, in, into the working cultures of our field is because it was never done before. And also there are, um, I mean, there are knowledge transfer um, studies in other heritage fields, or there also there's also a whole f study direction called knowledge management, of course. But these methods are very generic, and they don't necessarily apply all to, or they can't be applied all to our specific situation. So we have so the the, the field is so specific that we also thought it needs a very specific like approach. Um, yeah, so the goal was to develop strategies and methods. In the beginning, we thought we would end up with some kind of re like a methodology or like a recipe book with like a steps you can follow to secure your knowledge, the knowledge that you want to share or secure. Um, with objectives of doing a, a literature research, setting up a theoretical framework for qualitative research, define the expert, kno expert knowledge of audiovisual archivists, explore methods of knowledge transfer, and identify the challenges, and then formulate and disseminate successful strategies. And exactly, with the idea of, a, in the end, having a handbook and, and uh, a workshop or a symposium, which changed a little bit the, the outcome. Um, so, yeah, what I already said, there are examples from other fields, but in our field it hasn't been studied yet. Um, and, and we wanted to look at practices, and qualitative research is really um, good for that. So in the end, we collected, we also, um, yeah, we collected 86 interviews um, with colleagues from really institutions from all around the world. And we really tried to get also people um, interviewed uh, from in different positions, um, doing different types of work. Um, it is very film archive heavy in the end, but 
it also includes um, yeah a lot of other other types of yeah directions um, professions in our field um, and yeah so all these interviews were transcribed and we coded the interview so this is this grounded theory theory method uh, which we were not familiar with yet but Karen Gracie was there to guide us through this whole process of doing this grounded theory, which basically means going through all these interviews and discovering uh, patterns, themes that come up more often. Um, first of all, yeah, first we did like an open coding. It's called we really tried to mm, tag all kinds of different um, yeah, the ideas that came, came up in the text, um, which amounted to more than 2,000 different codes. And then we consoli consolidated them more and more and more. Um, so these are different codes than you have been talking about. This is really just, um, I don't have an example here, but um, it's like a tag or a little sentence describing the, what is in the, in the information from the data. Um, and w consolidating these, these um, codes led to uh, describing more broader categories, and this is um, what you can see here, this is the, the, the categories we ended up with, and these categories were then grouped together again. So for example, here you see, um, it could also be that one uh, like a part of the text would be tagged with multiple codes. So for example, you see not that there's knowledge gaps, um, but then there's also, for example, knowledge at risk. And this, m this means that you can really approach yeah, a, a similar theme from different sides. Now, when it's talked about as this is this knowledge is missing, and when it's talked about as this knowledge is um, um, this might be at risk of being lost. So, for example, this this group all um, clusters, themes, uh, categories related to documentation um, or to knowledge sharing practices, um, scenarios that make it necessary for knowledge, like that came up more often because they, they are important for um, important moments of knowledge sharing. And yeah, so these, um, these codes then let us, I mean, what we wanted is a handbook. So we started very broad with this, with this qualitative research and then we want to translate it into some kind of, something practical so that we can use. Um, and that took a while until we found the right form. Um, but now we're done. <laughs> and, the, and the book will actually be presented also in two weeks time. Um, and, and in the end it became not a recipe book, not a handbook with um, yeah, a fixed set of, of steps because actually one of the main outcomes of the research was that each situation um, with, uh, with which deals with uh, yeah, different people, different types of knowledge, um, also different cultural setting or financial si situation um, needs a, its own approach. Um, so what we did is we, we do summarize the findings from the research, uh, but we also um, inter, yeah, we uh, um, combined it with um, questions and steps that you can follow to find out what the methods are that you um, could use um, within your situation. And just to a little bit about, about the, the book. I don't want to talk too much about the book because I want you to join actually the book lounge next uh, in one and a half week, which I shared a link with. And then we're also going to talk more elaborately about how we think it can be used actually in archives. But just a little bit about the structure. So we've, we've formulated eight like more general insights into knowledge sharing that came up often in the interviews. Um, then there are two these two main chapters actually, point of departure one and point of departure two. Um, first, the first one um, is divided in the, the different areas of knowledge that are still very broad, but you can choose one as a start. And then um, um, it, it describes, the, so what we understand as under this type of knowledge, 
um, it also describes the challenges connected to it that we found. Um, and then it motivates you to also think about or like reflect on the situation in your, um, in your workplace. And then the other one is scenarios. And these are like, for example, when starting employment or ending employment or when knowledge has left, it's not at the organization anymore. Um, and the other, exactly, improving existing systems of knowledge sharing that might be there already, but not that could be improved or could be, uh, yeah, thought of more uh, met method, yeah, systematically. And then the, the, the last parts are some of the methods that we are suggesting, but not from our point of view, but from the point of view from of the archi our archivists uh, that we interviewed, we really tried to summarize what has already been done. Um, and, and in that way also, um, yeah, you can use it as a type of inspiration for um, your own situation, for if you want to use that method. Um, so yeah, the, the launch will be at the 22nd of November, organized or hosted by FIAF. You can also um, re register, it's for free. And also the book that's important, the book will be available, available as a PDF for free. Um, and there will be also copies for FIAF, FIAF members and perhaps a little bit more than that, but we still have to see. Um, and um, yeah, but you, it's free, uh, the, the, the book launch, but you have to register. Um, and I don't know how much time we have, but I just want to, five minutes? Okay, I just want to say that, um, uh, yeah, just a few re, um, um, highlight a few of the methods that were also mentioned during as yesterday and today uh, that I thought were really interesting and um, are worth mentioning. For example, the Smithsonian Archive that is thinking also about the network, like creating not only digitization workflow, but also a method uh, for, or like a network for specialist vendors for their machines and, and the, um, the, the, the maintenance of these machines. But and also this the idea of yeah scavenging all these ma manuals, digit uh, gathering them, digitizing them. Um, I thought that was also that's a really good example. And uh, the ZKM, I also really like the the the, uh, the example of working with communities outside of of uh, your archive. And I think that's also one of the main findings that you, it's not confined to the boundaries of your, like you have to look beyond for the knowledge that is also not only about the technique, but also about your collections, um, which was also again stressed by um, a colleague this morning from the NFA suggesting to, to involve also peer groups uh, in creating or uh, in preserving our collections or creating knowledge and sharing knowledge about our collections. Um, yeah, that's it then. Happy to also hear about more examples, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, because uh, I uh, always have some healthy doubt about ideas of FIAF, I want to ask, uh, First of all, if the old archivists uh, want to share their knowledge, if, if not their knowledge is already outdated, uh, then where you can find new people uh, to which you can send this knowledge because uh, it's archivists is uh, some very specific animal that cannot be found so easy. Uh, it needs to be, how to say, um, grow it uh, from the start. So you cannot teach them of ABC. You teach them how to write like a Shakespeare. And uh, first of all, uh, as we know, the um, way to the hell is paved with the good intentions. And how can happen that uh, we break this uh, rule? Uh, it means that uh, it will be made and have the results as it initially intended, and not in the meantime, uh, um, break in some way because uh, I'm very sorry, very, very, very sorry to say, but I was, uh, I see many ideas from FIAV that not ended uh, as they intended. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, it was not an idea of FIAV, but of the Austrian Film Museum and Slovenska Kinoteca. 
Um, it was also, sp I mean, it's it's supported and and endorsed by Fiaf, um, and um, I think it's also not. Yeah, perhaps it's a good point to say that this is not a, f a project that ends here, but it's something that we actually need to to do continuously. No, this knowledge sharing. Uh, there should be an awareness, and it's not just a. It's also not a standard or something. It's like a. a, a, a stimulation for discussion, for the discussion about knowledge sharing. And I think it's also, I mean, there's a few methods described in it, but there are many, many more, and there are also many that are not in there. So um, it's it's perhaps, it's like the, the groundwork for then also, um, hopefully, to then think about um, actual methods or, uh, and also like sharing in between institutions, but also within your institutions, opening this dialogue. and making people aware of it. And uh, I just want to say that also, and uh, I think it's true for all of the archives that participated and um, that did the interviews with their colleagues, that uh, the colleagues also became very aware of, uh, just by interviewing, uh, just by talking about the topic, um, it become very aware of, of the issue. And this already improves the, the situation also a lot. So um, yeah, to make it a topic basically and to keep keep it. Uh, a topic that's important. I just wanted to thank Janike. I think this is actually what we need, an in inspiration to read and to, to get the process going because we often don't have time or we feel that we don't have the time to transfer our knowledge within the institution. I think this is very much needed and I'm looking forward to read your book. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much, uh, and I'm really excited to read the book and hope to talk to you more about this um, a subject very near and dear to my heart. I'm wondering if uh, the project touched at all upon sort of structuring this knowledge as, as data as well, because um, or, or if it was largely sort of um, inter-organizational uh, thinking and, and methodologies. Uh, you mean also documentation practices in general or... Um, yeah, or like data structures that could capture this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would, yeah. Specifically uh, technical information. Mm -hmm, I would yeah. Um, no, that would be really uh, uh, good if there's like, if there are ideas. And, th and I think there are, they exist ideas about, like in the beginning we also got a lot of direct um, ideas, for example, uh, using um, AI to, to um, get data out of, emails or uh, about past projects or yeah uh, but no we don't uh, there's no specific uh, example that we found um, that we are describing in this in in the book but I think it, it yeah this is any ideas are also welcome what we did notice is all the technical departments are way better in and also the cataloging departments they are the ones that are really good <laughs> in of course uh, keeping uh, knowledge um, or like passing on knowledge, documenting it mainly. And and I think also between departments there can be a lot of learning. Like we can learn a lot from I think the technical departments in how they also many yeah document projects and cool. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, thanks for the really valuable researches. And uh, I have a question regarding the research methodology. And uh, maybe it's a little pre <laughs> before the book comes out, so maybe it will you know, all end. But I, um, as I understood your research and then the purpose of the book is kind of qualitative, uh, the data, but do you offer or kind of data available, quantitative uh, kind of evaluation, for example, uh, like instruct institutions size or, you know, the, the age groups and how it affects the kind of knowledge sharing patterns mm -hmm. or any kind of interview materials. You have quite a lot of done interview materials will be available for uh, future kind of quality, uh, not, not only quality, but quantitative research available other researchers. Mm -hmm. um, the, the um, yeah we did we didn't w also on with the on purpose because we we had to limit our scope of um, of research and you can yeah 
and it would be possible now to do to do, to use these interviews ag again and for other types of research because there's so much information about it goes in so many directions also. Um, but all the interviewers, um, they I mean we we agreed that it's for this project um, only. Um, so it's the interviews themselves are yeah they're uh, treated anonymously and also not available. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any questions from our online audience? No. Right. Well, thank you very much then. Sorry we don't have <laughs>